my fellow readers. Today I am back to talk about another manga series and that is Sasaki and Miyano which I've mentioned in uh, quite a few other videos um, as just being a, a gentle soft read um, and it is. Uh, it was originally published I, th I think online it's just like short comics and then they optioned uh, for it to go into print in a graphic novel format. It's by Sho Harasono. And uh, yeah, I'm holding volume two, but I uh, obviously I already have volume one as well. <laughs> Volumes one just put away. It was just put away. I finished volume two, so I figured I'd do a quick review of, of this series. And I believe volumes three and four will be published later this year. I think Three is expected for July and four is expected for October. However, that may change because I've gotten a lot of notices about different publications like switching their dates, um, which I've also mentioned. I think one got postponed to next year and I, I'm very, I'm still very sad about it. Like it was supposed to be published, I think, I think now and they pushed it to like next February or something. Hopefully that changes and they can push the date forward again. I don't know. It is what it is, but I was I was very sad. So anytime I give like an expected date, just know it could it could move. It could change. But hopefully we'll have volume four by the end of the year. So Sasaki and Miano tells the story of these uh, two boys. And <laughs> when it opens, we see Miano and he has noticed a fight breaking out and he's getting ready to call for help to get the, the fight broken up. Meanwhile, his senpai, who he has not met and doesn't know, but but is Sasaki, comes crashing through the, the window or not really crashing through, that's wrong. <laughs> but, he, but he goes, he sees the fight and he, instead of calling for help, goes into the fray. He's like, well, there's a fight, I'll break it up. And so they have this like very quick interaction. Meanwhile, Miano does finish his call for help to get the fight actually taken care of and doesn't really think too much about this other boy that went in there. You know, it is what it is. He goes into, they both go their separate ways from that fight in general. But for Sasaki, he can't really get Miano out of his head. He keeps thinking about this uh, kid and how cute he was. <laughs> he just thinks he's adorable um, and he wants to know who he is and just more about him in general. Um, Miano I don't think was that um, invested in the occurrences. <laughs> he quickly goes about his life but through a series of events the two do end up meeting again and forming this friendship and because Sasaki wants to get closer to Miano, he's more of like the one trying to figure out what Miano likes and trying to share his interests. So he does discover that Miano likes to read BL. And as he's described, <laughs> Miano likes BL. He likes to read it, but he does not want to be the main character in a, in a BL story. <laughs> He's not about like finding that kind of relationship himself. He just likes the stories. <laughs> he likes to read it, but he doesn't, he's like, I don't want to be a character in it. I just like the story. So don't make assumptions based on the fact that I like to read it. Um, and so it's kind of this interesting dynamic. Uh, Sasaki starts to ask Miano for recommendations about what to read and Miano starts lending Sasaki some volumes when when they meet up and it's just kind of cute and then they'll talk about the stories and they're all like very quick chapters while the story is engaging overall just know like a lot of this stuff is like very quick little slices of life um, stories but we do see fairly quickly you know that Sasaki is more invested in <laughs> Miano. Um, Miano likes Sasaki and is not really enamored. Um, 
he just thinks he's really cool. You know, he's, he's the senpai. He's really cool. He's tall, um, has piercings. He dyes his hair and he doesn't mind if he gets into a brawl, you know? So Miyano just looks at him and thinks he's cool. Um, <laughs> whereas Sasaki looks at Miyano and thinks he's really cute and he kind of wants to hug him and things. Um, and so you also have like this internal dialogue with the two characters that are, that are quite different. Um, Miano's more of a slow burn, slow to realizing emotions kind of character, whereas Sasaki is just like, I really like this character, but I have to hold myself back. I can't, you know, pursue him in this way because he's not ready for that. And uh, their relationship is just engaging in that way. There, I will say right off the bat, there are some bits of humor in the series that I don't necessarily get um, it's the it's traditional like Fujoshi humor um, like about how I mean in, in Miyano's case would be Fudanchi humor but like he'll ship other fellow students with one another and like make BL stories in his head about them and I don't get that because like I don't ship real people so like I think that that would be weird <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So I don't always relate to that. Um, I like seeing character progression and story development, and I don't care who the characters end up with as long as their stories are engaging, if that makes sense. I'm more of a character and plot driven person, and the rest of it, it isn't like essential. Um, so like some of the humor... I don't mesh with as well. Like I can see where they're going with it. And that I think people who are really into the genre and um, the titles of it, like they, they might be like, oh yeah, I totally get that. But you know, whatever. Um, there is <laughs> this, this part's weird because I don't mind this part of the shipping as much, but there is, um, Sasaki's classmate friend Hirano who does actually have a spin-off story that's why I said I don't, I don't so much mind shipping that because it is actually um another story where there's character development so Hirano does have this interesting dynamic and relationship with his roommate Kagiura um, and they have a spin-off series that's also very charming um and I feel like in that one um, their feelings are semi more mutual, but I fe feel like Hirano is still more like on the fence about it where, so it's kind of like the opposite where in this case, like the, um, you can't necessarily tell what the senpai is thinking, but the kohai is the one who is like, he is in love with Hirano. Um, <laughs> there's a part in this, like one of the short comics where he's like, I want to get married. Um, but he's thinking about Hirano. I don't know. In general, I think that this story is really charming because it's just, it's a soft read um, and it's relationship fiction. So you slowly start to see like emotions being realized, um, especially um, as it progresses and like Miano starts to realize that their time together is limited because Sasaki is um, going to be a third year and will be graduating and then moving on that they're not going to have this dynamic that they currently have where they can meet up every day and they can talk about the books and everything um, that will be coming to an end. So that timeline sort of leads Miano to question his emotions and his feelings. Plus there's a little bit of a hidden confession that happens that makes Miano um, also start to question things um, and consider his feelings. And I think it's good when characters um, pause to actually question their feelings and emotions and um, their relationships and what what they think will be happening. I mean, I like that so much better than you know, some stories. It's like they quickly fall into a relationship and I, I don't necessarily buy into that. I don't necessarily think that's true human development. Um, so I like stories like this where it's more a sweet, slow progression 
and a realization of feelings should they exist. I like that. I like that this is just a soft relationship story. And there's nothing too dramatic or whatever that's happening. It is very calming and relaxing. You can read some bits of it and just get to know the characters and um, feel more comfortable. I love the artwork. Let me see if I can find like a, just a good, a good shot. Well, I mean, even here is nice. It just has really nice artwork. Um, I just like them and the volumes are, are fairly short because like I said the um, the comic itself is is short like very short chapters but super nice super sweet on a, on a side note I don't want to get into anything like possibly controversial because that's not really me but on a side note I do know that there's a lot of discussion especially lately uh, about the BL genre and um, possible fetishization, fetish, fetishization. Um, and I think it's an interesting and necessary uh, conversation to have, but I would also definitely caution, um, one, attacking certain genres in general, um, or people who might read the genre, because I think that there's a lot of progression and movement that's happening. And while I do agree that there are definitely problematic publications, <laughs> I've definitely seen them and I usually don't continue reading them. Like if I check out a chapter and I'm just like, okay, no development of uh, characters or plot, um, I very quickly move on. So while I do know that there are definitely problematic works out there, um, at the same time, I, I think that there's been so much movement and advancement in in the storytelling and what's happening, even with um, a lot of the female authors that are writing in the genre. I think there's been more of a movement toward writing stories about um, equality. And so I think that's a, a big positive. And, and we've seen that Japan is currently moving toward a more um, marriage equality um, in the country. Um, and I do think that kind of having stories that are highlighting the equality of the relationships, and, and by that I mean like showing people as people <laughs> and not having it just be um, for entertainment um, or showing that there's anything wrong with it, I, I think actually does have benefit and does move things forward. Um, and Honestly, I'd hate to lose out on stories like this because I do think that there is value and charm in these kind of stories. So I would just caution, you know, attacking an entire genre or um, people who say that they're fans because there could be good progression and um, mental development actually happening. And so I would just, I would just say, you know, if, if the series itself or the author themselves are problematic, that's okay to like point out the flaws and the problems with that. Um, but to not attack people who might be a fan, maybe not that well at identifying things and may be in the process of developing. Um, because I can, I think that that could cause more, more harm than good. That being said, um, if you are looking for more like own voices, because a lot of BL is written by women, but if you're looking for more own voices stories that are really good stories, <laughs> um, there was one published in, in English not too long ago that's um, called uh, That Blue Sky Feeling. And um, he actually has a new... Um, it's not the work itself isn't new. It's been released for a while, but it's just coming out in English and it's called, I think our son is gay. The author of both of those is Okura. Um, and I think that they're really good. And if you want more, like, you know, if you are invested in the story and the characters like I am, um, you're going to get more of that with these. Um, I think our son is gay is actually cute because it's like told from the mother's perspective, 
but it's her um, accepting that her son is probably gay and is she's okay with it. She's trying to find ways to connect with him and let him know that it's okay that he is who he is. And I, I think it's semi-based on Okura's life. I'm not entirely, don't, don't quote me on that, but I think it's roughly based on him um, and his own personal experiences. And, um, and he used a lot of that too with that blue sky feeling, which is also a very charming read. So I'd recommend both of those if you want to stick more with like an own voices story and you don't feel comfortable um, reading some of the other tales because they are usually told by straight women that's that's an option to go down um and it's good but I, th I think a lot of ones like Sasaki and Miano are pretty safe for any reader um and it is more about the character and the development of the relationship and so there you go <laughs> we're all just looking for happy safe spaces to enjoy what we like and um, I'll recommend, I will continue recommending and reviewing work um, that I find has value. And there, there are a lot of um, similar options to Okura's work as well. So um, again, if you are looking more for more like own voices stories, they are out there. So all you have to do is kind of dig a little bit and, uh, and you'll find them. But in the meantime, there are some other perfectly great stories that are being told and I would still highly recommend Sasaki and Miano. I think it's really sweet. Um, again, some of the Fujoshi and Fudanshi humor I don't necessarily relate to but it's okay. I understand it as as their characters and, and it is what it is. Um, I'm going to keep reading and reviewing whatever I want to. <laughs> And that's it for this video. Until next time, bye!